relationships relationships our whole life is made up with relationships and I want to talk to you about these this week particularly today to talk about your relationship with Jesus Christ for practically every one of us all of you listening to my voice our lives are made up of relationships in many many different ways haven't you found this is true just now and then you find someone who lives totally alone and seldom sees anybody and very seldom talks to anybody in the town where I worked in England I had a special work with our milkman when he came to us in the morning we used to talk over anyone in the town who was lonely anyone who was sick anyone who needed visitation and if it was at that sort of point I'd call up the doctor's office and they would get a welfare worker to go and see what was wrong with Mrs. So-and-so and what we discovered was the only relationship Mrs. So-and-so had was with the milkman and so we helped her out and then just before I left England to come to Canada about 14 years ago I met a man who started the organization called the Samaritans and he was telling me that some people actually believe they've become invisible because no one ever speaks to them and even walking down the street people seem to look through them but that's not true for most of us we have family relationships and we'll share about that this week also we have relationships in our work in our school in all sorts of different ways in our leisure time activities relationships carry on but did you know or have you experienced the greatest relationship of all have you got a relationship a growing relationship with Jesus Christ because you really can and it will make all the difference to your life first of all I want to say this to you getting to know Jesus is so essential and so exciting you say well that's fine but how can I do it or oh, it all begins very simply it's a matter of salvation you say well I don't know what salvation is well first of all let me read to you from the Word of God in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12 we find these words salvation is found in no one else for there's no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved you can only be saved in Jesus Christ well you say saved from what saved from your sins and the effect of your sins you do know don't you that your sins will take you to eternal death unless you find salvation in Jesus Christ or oh, you say Richard that's terribly dogmatic I don't like to hear things like that no I'm sure you don't and I don't think you're alone in that but it just happens to be true by the Word of God and the only way you and I can be saved is to come to Jesus Christ and to tell him we're sorry for our sins and to receive his salvation and when you find Jesus you can begin to get to know him for he's a reality just as much as anyone else the only difference is we don't see him he lived and he died but he also rose from the dead and he's alive forevermore and he's knowable but also knowing him is very different from knowing about him many of us grow up in the church Protestants Catholics but we never know Jesus or oh, we know about him and some of us know a lot about him but that's not the same as knowing him we had one day a lady to our church a lady who came to our ministry who is a nun and she told us the most fascinating thing she said I've been a nun for 19 years for 18 years I knew about Jesus and for the last year I've known him and I felt I wanted to cheer because that's exactly how I'd been I knew a lot about Jesus for many years but it's much more recently that I came to know him to know him as Savior to know him as Lord but also to know him as a friend that's not always easy but it makes such a difference for example before I married my wife I knew about her and like most fellows before I knew my wife I tried to find out all I could about her but I still didn't know her until I married her and fortunately she didn't know about me until she married me 
knowing somebody is that intimate personal relationship also knowing Jesus is a growing personal relationship it's just like any other except I don't see him but he's so very real and he can be for you as he is for me obviously in any relationship you talk to the other party and you need to talk to Jesus yes of course I do he's so real and so close and I find that I can talk to him about anything in fact I really believe the reality of Jesus comes through more strongly when I do talk to him about anything this may seem futile to you but sometimes when I rush to see someone in the hospital and it's raining extremely hard and I'm in an emergency hurry I don't hesitate to ask the Lord for a parking space oh you say Richard he's not into parking spaces oh yes he is you would be absolutely amazed at the way he finds them somebody comes out of the hospital climbs in their car and takes off just ready and suddenly you begin to see that no longer is it coincidence but the hand of the Lord is there ready to help of course I talked him and I find that as I begin to talk to him everything begins to change but we have a problem here the moment you talk to someone about prayer they seem to think it's different from talking to somebody else and it really isn't you're simply talking to the one you can't see well you say that's futile oh no it works and it works wonderfully well you say why should I pray to somebody who already knows everything yes that can be a problem can't it first of all he told me to pray and I live in obedience to him and I find it's the only way to live the Bible calls it righteousness and as I do what he tells me my life begins to work out in new ways and we do believe it works because we see it works it was only the other week in one of our services that a lady stood up to tell us the answer to prayer from two Fridays before she had come to us and I remembered her so clearly she said I have lumps in my breast and I've got to go to the doctor on Tuesday would you pray for me and we prayed and we asked the same Lord Jesus to remove the lumps and she told us that those lumps had gone oh you say <laughs> it's just coincidence these things happen well that's true but what you find is that when you come to prayer it happens far too frequently just to be some sort of coincidence and you find that the Lord your God is listening and he's answering you say well when should I pray well first of all most people who love the Lord have a set time of day when they get alone with him after all if he's such a special friend you talk to him when you can and with that we also pray at any time I find driving in the cars a great time to pray first of all I often have to pray for myself and secondly would you believe I have to pray for other drivers maybe you're driving into the city now and it wouldn't be a bad thing to let some of those prayers just ascend especially the funny things people do have you noticed recently how everyone's given up signaling whether they're going to go right or left I assume they think you know what they're going to do it makes driving so exciting but I pray in fact I pray something else because I'm very strange on this I pray daily for the Lord to put angels around the car to protect it he does a wonderful job sometimes I feel those angels get knocked off and I have to ask for others pray whenever you want to talk to Jesus just talk for he's always there and longing to hear you he just longs to listen and he's waiting for you you say well what do I pray anything everything the sort of things you talk to the dearest friend about the most intimate friend share it with him and as you share in that way you'll find you grow into an intimate relationship with Jesus and it's also very real you say where do I pray anywhere everywhere obviously for many of us we have one place that becomes very special a sort of daily place for prayer where we just get aside with the master and talk to him but that doesn't prevent other times quite recently I've been cleaning and painting a new house oh I did a lot of praying it was a good time I was alone with my sponge 
and my cleaner and had a wonderful time. You see, it makes a difference to everything when you pray and believe that he's hearing you and he really is. The third thing I want to say to you is spend time with Jesus. You never fully know anyone until you spend a lot of time with them. And it's just as true with this relationship as any other. And obviously it takes time to grow in a relationship with Jesus. And it takes sacrifice. And some of us don't want to bother. And I really believe that the Christian believers listening to my voice this morning who've never grown in Jesus Christ, who've never had much of a relationship with Him because they've never bothered to take the time to grow in Him. And it makes it so different. Let me ask you something. If you're a married person, did you ever sacrifice to go on a date? Oh, <laughs> yes, of course I did. I'd do anything to go on that date. Then why wouldn't you do the same with Jesus? He loved you enough to die for you. So build up this relationship with him in a number of different ways. Learn all you can about him. Read about him in the Word of God. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, the Gospels, and learn about Jesus there. The sort of person he is, the things he does and says. Spend time with other people who know Jesus. It's interesting, isn't it? If we're going to marry a girl, we do spend some time with her family. Sometimes we have to get out of that situation because things are not too good. But we just try to learn all we can about her. It's no different with Jesus. Also, talk to him whenever you can and whenever you need to and wherever you are. You may be in the office and you have a mighty decision to make. Talk to Jesus. He knows the answer and he's waiting to convey it to you. You may be at home listening to me, and you may be in bed because you're an invalid. Talk to Jesus. He'd love to hear you right now. And also, give yourself to this relationship as you would to any other. Just grow in that every day. Spending time with him, talking with him, sharing with him, sharing the joys as well as the sorrows, having some fun with him, I think Jesus has a great sense of humor. If he didn't, he wouldn't put up with Christians, would he? No, I really think he does. And he's just longing to hear from you. Why don't you just kneel down and talk to him?